It looks like I've got the absolute pleasure today because I'm out on site with my best mate, Marcus, and we're carrying out the EICR. Okay, yep. now we've done a few controversial short videos where we wanted comments. We're going to yep. be a little bit less controversial today. <laughs> As we look in the back of this oven here, describe how often we would carry out a test on this in EICR to prove the exposed conductive part of the oven itself is actually earth. Yeah, so it's actually a good point to bring up because sometimes what we'll do is we'll test at the switch itself because not all cookers are easily accessible to remove. Maybe it's an integrated unit or maybe it's too heavy for one of us to pull out. They've got lino, etc. We don't want to damage the floor. So we won't always pull a cooker out and actually test on the connections on the back. However, it was quite easy on this one. So normally what we'd maybe do is we would test R1, R2 at the, the switch itself. Okay, we have a rotary isolator in place for this one. Let's say it's a switch, we'd normally test the R1, R2, and then we would maybe move on to, which I've done in a previous video when I had maybe a little less facial hair. I'm not suggesting I've got loads now. We would maybe test from the CPC in the switch to the actual chassis of the cooker just to prove that it has a connection to the greater mass of earth for the circuit. But because I could easily pull this out without damaging the floor, etc., um, I thought it was only right as part of the inspection process, if anything, just to take a look at what's going on. The cooker's around 12 years old. When I actually opened up where the connections are, Ooh. you can see that the line conductor which is quite unusual because sometimes you'd probably suspect it's the neutral, wouldn't we? When we say, oh, there's it's something always... burnt out, it's always the neutral. Yeah, so what's actually happened is the line conductor has melted and it's important to say that this isn't because the oven's got too hot, okay? Ah, we so... don't need to install a fan behind here to make sure it doesn't happen in the future. So not a heat transfer back from the element on the no. other side. We think there'll be some distance and different cable in between there. Yeah, exactly. Now, we probably would suggest using six mil twin and CPC or twin and earth cables probably wrong. Yeah. Uh, you'd probably go, go H for a HO7, yeah. maybe. Some some cookers specify HO5, HO7. Yeah, flex. Um, yeah. But it wouldn't have changed the problem because what has caused this problem? Yeah, so again, because it's not the heat transfer from the cooker, um, it's either going to be a loose connection, so under tightened, or an over tightened connection. Now, what I would probably suggest looking at this is it's probably an over tightened. When we get a close up, you can see that the actual connection looks like it's slightly twisted. Right. So it might have been over tightened and slightly broken, maybe a connection where it connects onto a part of the oven, causing that to arc over time, etc., and then, yeah, cause this damage here to the cable. Or maybe they've over tightened it and ripped the thread slightly, and of course then over time, with the amount of current, this is yeah. probably, we're ta talking many amps in here. Yeah, exactly, heat, and yeah. because we're in a commercial property, actually, they use this oven most days, and it's on for a long periods of time. Okay. So, yeah, so it, it could probably, possibly come from that. So taking another look at it, if we were going to suggest a code, and we'd like people really in the comments yeah. to do it for us and maybe link to what they think on regulations, all the rest of it. Yeah. Brand new ovens I've seen now with torque settings, appropriate yeah. determinations, which hopefully would overcome this yeah. with the appropriate torque screwdriver. It's a bit of a one. What are you going to code this one? It's a tough one, isn't it? Because you, you could say C1, but is it immediately dangerous? It's not obviously currently on fire. The test results actually tested fine. So when you actually test them connections, they still tested okay. I imagine it's welded itself to the point where it's very tight. Um, probably going to go a C2, so it's potentially dangerous. And that, that really just goes by maybe looking at certain documents, code breakers, electrical safety first documents, where it talks about other things. Maybe we have a plastic consume unit with signs of thermal damage is recommended as a C2. So similar situation, there's obviously signs of thermal damage. So probably going to go a C2 for this one. Okay, we spoke to the customer and they've said to us they're actually replacing this, aren't they? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. We're, yeah, this, so we're not leaving this. No, 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 no. Yo, so it's the, the new oven's coming tomorrow and I'm going to connect it. I'm still here doing the ICR over a couple of day period. It's a big site. Um, so we're actually going to replace it while we're here. It's not going to be used in the meantime. Um, maybe that swayed my C2, C1 um, situation, if you like. But yeah, I'm pretty confident with a C2 for this one. And we'd like every Everybody to comment what they thought if they'd found yeah. this. Would they be panicking at a C1? Would they be at C2? I don't think many of us maybe would be at that uh, C3 and walking away from it. No, there no, would no, be no. some actions taken here. But it's your comments we want. Please leave them below.